And now, I myself started off as an environmentalist. I was a keen environmentalist. I mean, the joys of nature are one of the great blessings of life. So, of course, you've got to be concerned that nature flourishes. And the same applies to diversity of species. So I think environmentalism is a very, very important cause. But it's got to be based on evidence. And uh, I got more and more interested in the whole question of genetic modification because that, in a sense, has been the central battlefield in which the anti-science and science forces have locked horns. The more I've looked at genetic modification, uh, the more I've become an enthusiast for the technology. The evidence is fairly clear on certain points. First of all, there can be no doubt that so far there is no evidence of any damage to health, any danger to health. This is a point which the op opponents still haven't grasped and won't admit. The Third World Academies, the Indian, the Mexican, the Brazilian, the Chinese National Academies, apart from those in the United States and Britain, they say that there's no evidence of any harm to health or so far to the environment. It's reduced, it's quite clear, it's reduced the use of pesticides. It produces greater productivity. And if it reduces the amount of farmland you have to use, it can actually be very beneficial to biodiversity. It's very beneficial to the environment. And indeed, there are any number of developments which could make a huge difference to the fight against disease in the world. And here are these people who are, who are fighting against it, who claim that they're benefiting the third world. Hypocrites they are. I mean, it is extraordinary. How, they don't even look at the evidence. They're just dogmatically opposed to the evidence. Some people take the view that um, you, know, you, you must always distrust scientific research produced by companies. Um, my answer to that is uh, good research is good research. And you can have very good research produced by companies and very bad research produced by the public sector. And the other way around. What matters is does the research that's been done stand up to uh, testing? Has it been peer-reviewed? Is it reproducible? Those are the tests. And if you look at the, at the crops, BT cotton, for example, now benefiting small farmers all over the world, these are based on a lot of work which was done by companies. People constantly invoke the precautionary principle. But in practice, what it's often used for is to say, even if there's no scientific evidence, uh, but there's a lot of concern, then we should apply the precautionary principle. Well, if you do that, end of innovation. And in practice, of course, it's invoked by people who want to stop a technology they don't like. If you look at the countries which are the most successful democracies and the most prosperous countries in the world, you don't find them places where, you, where they turn their back on science.